um, I'm Karen. I don't see Hildegard here, but we do have Florence who's on the committee. And so, how do you do this? Down there. There's the arrow down. Arrow down? Yeah. Okay. So, REVA will be an important player in the emerging environmental and transportation <coughs> economies of New York City. Uh, it'll be a focus of the activities described under the recent uh, Community Leadership and Climate Protection Act uh, that the governor uh, just recently uh, signed. Um, and Red Hook is already a racially and economically diverse community. It is the mission of the Economic Diversity Committee to bring more equity to this community uh, that has very low incomes concentrated in the Red Hook houses while uh, being surrounded by maker spaces, homeowners, and businesses. Um, our plans need to celebrate diversity while better serving the existing population, improving their quality of life in terms of employment, educational opportunity, and community cohesion. Um, Red Hook will continue to attract new businesses and development. How can we ensure those businesses commit to us as a community? That's the challenge. Um, so, um, I'll get back to if I missed anything. Big ideas. New Red Hook businesses um, need to provide jobs and job training. They should commit to preferential treatment for local residents to an established percentage equal to or better than uh, Section 3. I should have said Section 3. So in public housing, uh, there's a percentage of jobs that go to uh, low-income residents, not just in public housing, but anyone in the city who makes under $47,000 a year would be eligible as a Section 3 hire. We want to make sure that our plans for businesses in this area at least take a look at those type of economics. So anybody who's living in the area who's making less than $47,000 a year should be uh, included in our community asset mapping that we do here so that we know who are the people who need the most help to be able to stay in place in Red Hook. Um, institute the idea of a hiring carbon tax. If businesses do not reach goals in local hiring quotas, they should establish internships, mentoring, and even donations to local, uh, local uh, community-based organizations, uh, the Red Hook uh, Resident Councils, Red Hook Initiative, Regency for Localism, and of course our artist uh, community, because I use the artists in this community um, to, to, um, to do a lot of workshops. So uh, I don't know if you know, last year we had an artist come and she projected off of the roof of this very library, and she projected sea level rise in front of the library and so that's exactly where the sea is going to be if we don't take action in this area. So it's an easy way for me to bring the community and to involve them because as people walk down the street and as people came to this library, they saw these barracudas uh, swimming on the sidewalk and that made them say, hey, what are these fish doing here? And I said, well, you, we'll be living with the fish in short. You know? And this is a way that we're able to bring those concepts to people who don't have all day to sit and hear technical yeah. information. You know, technical gets very boring very fast. But we have ways to treat, to teach things, including capitalism, by just buying little tiny um, goats and cows and potato bags and little little toy um, products. And what we do is we have uh, workshops where we literally sit down and teach people capitalism within a half an hour to an hour, and it sticks. Um, bolster and create programs such as Red Hook Initiative that provides training in emerging fields. So far, Red Hook Initiative has done digital stewards, they've done um, solar installation training. Um, we need more of that. <coughs> we need, um, we need um, education, and certification on brownfield remediation, on lead removal, on how 
and 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 how should should a person address mold in their apartment? What molds are caused by the tenants' actions, and what mold is caused by the infrastructure? Um, that'll make a big difference. Create the position of a red economic diversity ombudsman to reach out to powerful local concerns, including Tesla. Tesla is right here. We know by 2050, most cars in New York, if 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 if, if the climate emergency and and um, the laws that we're putting in place now in regards to climate change and sea level rise, if it's accurate, by 2050, we won't have many cars that go on fossil fuels. We will be using electric cars. So we need to make sure that Tesla, who's already in our community, um, helps us at, uh, by having someone who can talk to Tesla and bring back scholarships, bring back technology, and so we can go back and forth and really create a real positive relationship. We have Chase and we have, um, we need to encourage contributions from all of these different um, spaces, including the Moriarty's who I worked for 10 years ago and um, the O'Connell um, Foundation. We have to use different people to address different people in this community. We don't always, you know, I might not see eye to eye with every single person, but for those that I can't reach, there are other people in this community who can reach those people. Um, uh, Karen, real quick, for that sure. section three, is there sort of a reverse um, outreach, not just to the businesses about filling their jobs? Is there a good system for people to understand that they could qualify? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. So um, uh, with Brazilian Red Hook, uh, we were working with Goza, the governor's office for Sandy Recovery. And um, when we uh, talked to them about Section 3, they immediately posted it on their page. And so the city, uh, the governor's office, they all have mechanisms for people to sign up for Section 3 work. And also, um, New York City Housing Authority, through its resident engagement program, is getting better at getting the word out. Um, but they don't listen. That's true. So we need to support them. We want to. Um, you gotta get um, a union. I have a folder full of people, mm -hmm. resumes, all night, all the classes. I gave a lot of those classes. Right. Any class that came out, I have. You think they were giving me stuff? Right. And see, that's not They're fair. They're giving it to that kind. Mm -hmm. They bring them with them. Yeah. They don't so that's something we need to address in Red Hook. Um, we need to figure out how do we help Lily Marshall and the resident council make sure that. We don't have a $550 million job in Red Hook that's only hiring one resident. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's quite unfair. Yeah. And so we need to work with Ms. Marshall to make sure that uh, as a group, as a coalition, we push forward with that. Maybe that's just showing up at David Stahl's office on a Friday. You know, uh, maybe it's also engaging with HUD, I'm not sure. But we need to um, figure that out with Lily. Um, we need to publicize the local business contributions to our economic diversity plan and, um, and to any monies that they've given us for trainings in order to create and encourage further business community buy-in. So how do we get people to buy-in? We actually appreciate them. Appreciation goes a long way. We um, have a program that we work with called Community Heroes, um, where we literally post local heroes. Maybe we can adapt that program to post uh, businesses in the area that are being good neighbors, that are taking initiatives to try to hire people from um, this area, not just public housing, but the whole uh, Red Hook area. Protect and serve a diverse community population equally through programs like CERT training. So CERT is Community Emergency Response Teams. And so FEMA and OEM sponsors that. It's not a paid position. It's several weeks long. Um, I, uh, we, it was offered to re residents, but not in their area. They had to go outside of the area. They had to spend four to six weeks uh, pretty much all day in a setting. And I feel that they should get an honorarium, at least, for giving that amount of time. We all live in New York. It costs to live in New York. It costs to breathe in New York. 
And that's quite unfair to ask someone to give up six to eight weeks of their time without giving them a small honorarium. So um, what I heard back from um, <laughs> Hildegard is that OEM is adamant about not paying for CERT. Maybe there's some kind of way we can come up with some type of fundraising mechanism or something that would pay for CERT training in this area. And let's keep in mind that inside of the Red Hook Houses, there are, uh, there's a slow moving disaster that's happening in regards to gas allergies, in regards to other issues. So we need the CERT trained and we need them to come from public housing because they understand what they're dealing with on the ground. Um, create opportunities for youth engagement and education. That's the internship with organizations such as the Urban Land Institute. I've been working with them recently on urban heat islands. So in the next 10 to 20 years, the temperature is going to increase. And when you live in an area, thankfully, Red Oak still does have um, permeable uh, uh, places where, where we have soils and we don't have just a slab of concrete. But those areas like Gowanus, where it's mostly concrete, when the sun penetrates that concrete, that concrete now becomes hotter than the sun. So if it's 90 degrees, it's about 105 that they're feeling reflected off. But this is the way they feel because of the reflection of the concrete. That causes dehydration, heat stroke, and other issues. And so we want to make sure that we partner our young people with the Urban Land uh, Institute so that they can come up and cross ideas from the academia side and the people who are actually living through the actual um, the heat. Um, they both need to talk to each other because I'm sure together you can come up with even better ideas. Um, Felix course opportunities with in institutions like CUNY. Uh, they do have a, a NYCHA Leadership Academy now that they partner with the Murphy Institute. Maybe we can have that expanded, or maybe we can have that where Lily can actually post that right here at the Red Hook Houses, so that we start building new leadership for the future in Red Hook. Um, Credential-based training with organizations like the Teamsters. So we know that in order to protect Red Hook, we're going to be bringing in a lot of soil. The ball fields are going to be, their elevation is going to be raised by three, about three feet. That, that requires more soils coming in. Um, so why don't we use our program, which was called Red Hook on the Road previously, um, that's now part of the Fifth Avenue Committee. Let's look at that list of people who've already graduated with CDL, and let's offer them an opportunity mm -hmm. to come back into the fall and work out here in Red Hook. Let's also use that program to create more spaces for more people to become unionized through the Teamsters. Um, and facilitated training, where training main lies into the job market for preferential treatment. So we're talking about one of the things that um, Quadrozzi and Lily and Ready Center had came up with is an idea of a floating lab. So we would like to see trainings on that floating lab around renewable energy around um, marine biology, around all of the different issues that we're going to be facing um, and, and protecting over the next hundred years. And looking forward, uh, key players, the community, uh, EDC, NYCHA, and I don't even know who that is right <laughs> Um And again, I just want to mention too that um, I am an ECHO community partner, that's an early childhood health outcomes partner. I was approached by NYU Lagone, Dr. Beverly Watkins, and um, they've been studying um, environmental hazards in the rural uh, parts of, of the United States for quite some time, where they actually track, track from pregnancy throughout the life of the child. Well, we're bringing that to Red Hook through a partnership with NYU and um, Park Slope's Family Health Center. Um, we're, we're trying to partner with um, local initiatives like Alex House 
which is a, 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 a it's a uh, business that was created by a local public housing resident, Samora Coles, that actually teaches young people how to better parent their children, how to make healthy meals for their children, and etc. So we're partnering with them and with um, other initiatives to track how are these environmental <coughs> conditions um, or toxins affecting our children. And I also have two um, interns here on loan from us from NYU Ladone um, who will be working with us doing soil samples throughout uh, Red Hook. And um, also, if you guys have any questions about toxins um, relatable, um, you can contact me and I'll make sure that I contact them and so we could kind of like work together and figure out what's going on. On this side, <laughs> we have two interns who are working with Alex Washburn from Saudi and they'll be out here the whole summer as well. I would just love to see all the interns kind of show up at um, RHI at, at the resident council meetings and interact with um, the population in Red Hook. Just tell them what you do. Sometimes just telling a person what you do piques their interest enough for them to look and see, hey, I might actually like doing, becoming an architect or, or becoming someone who, who works with child health. So thank you again. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, questions, feedback. Feedback? <laughs> Input. Input? <laughs> and remember, I do work for the Fifth Avenue Committee, so there are some concerns. There is a 80 block rezoning that's going on, right? Let's go back to that map real quick. I can find it. Yeah. So, what's the good one? Oh, oh it's cut off. You had a better one somewhere. But there's this uh, rezoning that's going on right in this area. And this is the Gowanus Canal. And so our elevation is lower than even this area's. And you know, shit rolls downhill. And so I just want you to know as a group that I'm concerned with in Red Hook that yeah, uh, back in the 90s, we fought against a waste treatment plant being put out in Red Hook but we have a main sewer line that still runs down through Red Hook and then it's pumped back up to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So right now that sewer line holds about 200,000 gallons a day of raw sewage that goes this way. With the rezoning, the DCP is estimating that it will be 2 million gallons a day. So I want you to be aware of that because that's a big issue. That's a big deal. If we flood like we did in Sandy, then we're not going to be flooding with just salt water. We're going to be flooding with sewer water. And so we need to really think about that and maybe advocate to have an interceptor placed at the uh, north end of the canal so that it never even comes down to Red Hook. We want that shit to go straight to yeah, the waste treatment station. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm hoping that over the next year, um, I'm able to bring some of the workshops that I've been doing at the Fifth Avenue Committee. I know in September, we're, we're going to try out an environmental justice curriculum for a second time. It was very successful about a year and a half ago. This time, we're going to be paying local leaders and local residents to actually um, facilitate the workshop because we feel like we have it down uh, simple enough for any resident to be able to actually give the workshop and we're going to give them an honorarium because that's the way it works. So again, thank you so much and stay tuned. Thank you. Just for the sake of time, yeah, we gotta move forward. So yeah. Do you want to pop back up? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it sounds like we've been sort of talking uh, throughout the whole thing, but you know, we with regarding to issues, actionable items. If you guys want to give your input, we're open to have a discussion. We can talk about next steps also in terms of 
how we plan on sort of engaging with you and taking it to the next level. Um, but I open it up for your, your input and your feedback. I think I just want to say like I have a lot of respect for you, for you guys and your committee for taking this on. Like obviously there's a ton of work that's been going in around this, um, so thank you. Um, and I'm just I'm excited about like the fact that you all are doing this so intentionally around actionable items. So I know earlier um, it was said about working with city, state, and federal. Um, Funding, like looking at looking at that as you're going into planning your action items, are you already in talks with those players, like about this process? Yeah. So Perkins and Will, well, all just stepped out, but uh, we actually have a project list of existing projects that are in the pipeline from every city agency and federal and and state, and they've they've taken that list and they've whittled it down to the ones that are relevant to Red Hook. And then we're looking at how we will or will not plug in. But I think what's also important is that, I, I, while I think that's important, I also want us as a community to understand that like, we should take on some of those projects ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And figure out like what we can do to parallel. So for instance, this like idea of like having our own micro buses, like do we get somebody interested? You know, so like thinking about what what the range of options are from those existing projects, projects we could plug into, projects we want to propose, and then ones that we feel like we could manage to bring on. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean just to tag on her to um, add on to what you said. We're part of, we're participating in a program called Town and Gown, which is through the city um, and the Department of Design and Construction. It was like, it's kind of an experiment about taking on at least one of those projects from the list that we just talked about and using it as an experiment in like how the city can better interact with communities and like earlier on in the process to get, um, so, that, so that the community is happier with the process process and that their input is heard earlier on so that it doesn't get to the point which happens in most city projects where you know the city suddenly reveals this project and everybody in the community is like what is this it's horrible it doesn't work and you know blah 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 so you know so we're working with this this program called Town and Down which Parking and Will sort of um, got us set up with um, as, as like as an experiment to do like at least one of those projects and as a learning process for the city. So, but you know, on our own, we want to like do other projects. Yeah, I think the other thing I'm really interested in, and all of you represent various different organizations, is also to start having the conversation of, without too much mission creep, how will you guys envision your organizations participating or taking on some actions or what is of interest to you in your organizations in terms of what was presented here, um, so that way we can help foster that within your organization. Like maybe it's one of the Resilient Red Hook committee members coming and working with your organization directly around a specific topic, right? And so I feel like with our 15 committee members, maybe we can start to create like liaisons or action subcommittees that then work specifically around that. Because we have, I mean, you, everybody from every organization in Red Hook was invited and probably 15 people didn't come. So from Cora Dance to um, uh, John Quadrozzi to, you know, sort of like the, the, the rap, you know, so they, they are all interested. They couldn't be here today. But I'm hoping that what we're going to do is we're going to create these like strings and connections and then various different organizations. Obviously not everybody can do everything, right? So you guys have the local leaders. It's amazing. You're already doing resiliency work. What we want to know is just how can we Strengthen that and make that you know sort of. Um, it's all about leveraging. Better, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, one thing we're thinking about that, like, I'm curious of how you guys are thinking about it as well as like a key element of resiliency and right hook being preservation of public housing, public housing, private privatization, and displacement from gentrification or infill or rat or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, as one piece, and then the other piece has like investment in infrastructure needs that like are trickling down to like the world and everything else that you mentioned. As like if we're going to talk about resiliency, right? Like the the event that we did last year, that's one of the big things that came out of it. People were like, if we're going to talk about resiliency, we have to talk about a healthy home. Right. So we're focusing in on that this year as like 
purview, like that's going to be our priority area. Um, and so I think like we're happy to collaborate from that standpoint. Um, but how are you all thinking about that in terms of like your definition of resiliency and how is that woven through uh, the work? I mean, I heard it a little bit throughout, but yeah, so yeah. I, I would just say there's no. To, if we talk about a definition of resiliency, we're going to go down a rabbit hole and we'll spend six months trying to define it. What we really want to figure out, and this is the process that we go through, is understanding which issues are the most critical for the neighborhood, for the area, and those that we can have the most impact on. So there may be things that are very critical that we can't affect, um, and there may be things that we can do very easily, but they're really not going to get us a lot of uh, back-end value. And so these are... so. But, but one of the things that we do is we actually evaluate these things in detail. So when you're talking about keeping the public housing stock the way it is, I mean, per, you probably don't remember the HOPE 6 programs because they might be a little bit before your time, but HOPE 6 was supposed to be this great aspirational you know, federal program that was supposed to solve all of the you know, country's uh, public housing problems. It actually turned out to be terrible, right? And it was because they weren't tracking what was happening to people who were displaced from the public housing program. So our goal here is to figure out how to keep the public housing but make it better and also take money from infrastructure improvements that we've done in a, in a way that we've done in other places and have that have a positive impact on the public housing um, stock that's here. I mean, it, Can you explain what you mean by that? I don't know yes, exactly. So, so these are weird counterintuitive things that happen. And, and so what happens when public housing gets relocated? So somebody comes in and wants to say, set up a mixed income housing project, right? And so it's market and public. Is There are a lot of people that are living in the public housing projects that have to get relocated somewhere. And te what tends to happen is they get relocated places that don't have the services that are within walking distance or within easy access, and they get distributed. And so you end up with a really problematic situation where you're reducing the amount of services and you're increasing gentrification under the auspices of trying to increase affordability. It just, there's a there's a real disconnect between aspiration and outcome. And this is one of, the, one of the reasons that we have to really look at and evaluate these situations. And then there's also a situation where, say, the Department of Public Works is going in and putting in place sewer systems. And we've seen this time and time again, where the, the department sectoral view of what's happening is only to move water and not to take that asset in, uh, and reposition it in a way that it can create uh, a public park or some sort of public amenity. We don't know exactly what those things are, but that's what we're trying to work through. I mean, just this conversation, I have pages of notes after 10 meetings that I've already had with Brazilian Red Hook. We've got to figure out how to prioritize this because you're never going to be able to do everything, even that everybody wants to do today. It's just not possible. But I th think back to your question, I think what we could do is we could come RHI and us could have one specific community-based meeting Absolutely. that's just about housing, yeah, 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 yeah. right? And Absolutely. literally just about housing and the sort of quality of housing and the health right. issues around housing. Absolutely. And then we could take that as a topic, right? And and work out what the sort of community vision is around that. Right. So I think that that would be like a part, you know, a partnership on a specific Topic. And can I just say, because I am public housing, me and Lily, and so one of the things I want you guys to do is to, again, stay in your expertise and let the local experts tell their story. Don't tell them what they need. They don't need you to tell them what they need. They know what they need. That's number one. Okay, so that is a, that's something that creates friction at the door. They have to be the ones to decide and tell you. And you have to learn how to serve the underserved. Okay? Because even though I used poor for Red Hook, we're not poor. People are stealing our poor. We're not poor. People are stealing our poor. So just like you have mixed financing outside of public housing, Red Hook has mixed financing inside of public housing. So there are some people who are paying 14, 16. $1,800 a month rent right here in Red Hook. $2, and $2,000, that is equivalent to 100% of fair market rate. That's what they're asking for in affordable housing. 60, 40, 80% of fair market rate. The educational part is the key. People have to be educated on AMIs and what that means, area medium income. They have to know what the percentages are that DCP is working with. So if they're working with 40, 60% of AMI, 
and we know most of our residents only have it 30 percent then it's our job to push for the 30 percent option right. it's our job but we can we can surmise that ourselves through in-depth surveys and studies to say really what's really happening in red you, you know what i'm saying also we are in talks with hud and with nycha to create actual life skills training and home economics in each development. That's, when I came to Red Hook Houses, I didn't even get a manual. And I had never cleaned a stove or a refrigerator and I don't do a damn good job now, so I'll be honest with you, I don't. You know, but if someone had came to me and said, I have this class that we give to all new residents, then, of course, I could have went there and found out a wealth of information. This is how we're going to move it forward on a public housing resident in collaboration with what already exists, resident council. You know, so everything doesn't have to be done by outside entities or from the academia. You have people on the ground who know what's happening out here. Reese, Reese, Reese handles everything we like to do. We have beautiful programs, so many types of programs, except for these people, yeah, I think. Yeah. Karen, yeah, so you were issue that I saw somewhere about bringing home back shackles in the schools. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was interesting. Yeah. And, and also because when we look at the demographics in public housing, at least in South Brooklyn, we have about 57, 60% of 50 plus. But they're not dead. We're not dead. <laughs> We're not dead yet. So that means that we have to find ways to take what they've gained through experience and through life and pass it on to the next generation. I know people who crochet who would love to come to a resident council uh, office and teach crocheting once or twice a week. We have to expand on what we already have, and we do have talent inside of public housing. So through our partnership, too, with um, you, <laughs> John Kibbo, he's been around for many years pushing a, a human capacity map. That map just literally asks, have you ever crocheted? Have you done this? What are you interested in? And once we gather that information, we can actually uh, de-aggregate it and actually reach out to people and say, hey, I see that you pay 100% of what fair market is in this area. Would you be interested in a model block program? Which is something that Alex Stanton Washburn talked about earlier. Those are the people I don't want to hear out of 3,000 units in Red Hook, we don't have at least 50 people ready for, for home ownership. We do. Statistically, the number says we have at least 50 people who are ready for home ownership because of 3,000 units being in public housing. We also have another percentage that would be okay living in the new affordable housing that's going up in Gowanus. We have to literally use what we have and make it work for everybody. And so when, when I hear people talk about, you know, people don't have enough money to go into home ownership, I'm a little suspect of you because there's just too many damn programs around here. We got Opportunity Zone. We got Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing. We have all of these different programs in place. They, hell, they give $50,000 to, to residents to go to two workshops, you could get closing costs and down payment, free from the government. And you need so, elected officials to work more with us. Yeah. And said they take the money and they give it to a certain group of people. We gotta stop that. We have our own 501, mm -hmm. so there's no reason they can't do this. Me, because right. I can do anything that they can do. Okay. All you need to do is give me the money, I'll show you anything. Instead, we don't get the money. They send money to you, 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 and everybody's around. They don't give us housing. Give it to us and we'll show you what to do. Housing is no longer giving us the money that we used to get. Mm -hmm. Right now, you go, I have a program going to, we're going to a New Orleans, to a conference. It's all about what's going wrong in housing right now. We come back with all the information how it still don't change their ways. They so, still do the same thing over and over, over. So I just want to go back, because we're already over time, I just want to go back to your point, which I think is a key point, which is how we're defining what's happening in the neighborhood and, and everything. And I just think that 
what I was trying to say is there's a lot of unintended consequences that happen. People can have great ideas and the best intentions, but it might make the world worse, right? That's just the way it is. Um, but I, that we're trying to sort of help reduce the amount of those unintended consequences. And I think that we've gotten a huge amount of information here. We've gotten a huge amount of background information. What we need to do is go back and put all of this in place so that it's organized and we can look at it as a community and understand where we need to target, who we need to partner with, how those partnerships emerge, um, so that in five years we look back and say a lot of this stuff worked in a way that we weren't anticipating. So, so just because because we do need to wrap up because we've already lost a whole lot of people, is there anything else that anybody has at a very high level that we haven't really touched on that we should be focusing on before we come back to the next uh, next phase of this process? Any big ideas that we're missing? There are a lot of big ideas. There are a lot of small things and a lot of big things we're going to have to sort of worry about. I just wanted to say, I feel like I missed in my presentation. I know I was long, I'm so sorry. But um, pollution, I mean, I was talking about pollution, but pollution is also climate. So I didn't so, really stress the fact that yes. all of my stuff is like also not only reducing let me, let, pollution, but, cl but the absolutely. stuff that affects climate. And that's a great point. And every single sector affects every other sector, right, right? right? And so the public health issues that you were asking about, public housing, these are ways that we can move, le we can use legal methods for make for facilitating change because they have health implications. Everything affects everything else, and this is the difficulty. And hopefully, we can help organize all of this so that it's clearer, and we can understand the the, the cross committee impacts um, as it as it pertains to, to the resilient framework that we set up. For the David, and that goes back to answering her question about what is resilience. I mean, the way we define resilience, which is not easy to define, and we're not hoping to define it's not, but it's just the process. It's systems thinking, and it's holistic thinking. So that's all we're sort of bringing to the table, is asking those right questions, like what is the consequence of this? So it's, it's about building resilience as a process, more so than just one thing that you're going to fix, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I don't know that we talked about noise pollution, but all of this trucks and yep. in industry, we need to um, respect that. that. That really affects people's health. Right. This is and this is where we were. We, we um, did talk a bit about monitoring the trucks, and so that's both mm -hmm. the vibration and noise, and we've had those conversations already. Um, and so that's definitely something that's on the list. Yeah, yeah. it does definitely affect psychological health, especially. Yeah. Okay, so I know we're running a little bit over, so I just want to wrap up. Um, the last point is basically how do we stay engaged? Like what's the next step and how, how do we want, you know, to work with, you know, all of these other groups? Um, we're going to be sending out an upcoming survey, or we're going to be sending out a survey um, based on the conversations of this, of, you know, this presentation. And we're also going to send out a uh, sort of a PDF version of this presentation so you have everything sort of fresh in your mind. And we'll use, you know, we we'll use the survey answers um, as a, you know, sort of a next step of how to, um, <coughs> you know, incorporate all of your ideas. Um, and then we're planning to do a community-wide outreach meeting in the fall. Uh, we haven't set a date yet, but early fall 2019, so like September probably. And you know, we'll want to, you know, we would like to have your, you know, everyone's organization participating in that, and using your network to outreach, outreach to people and really draw everybody in because, you know, we don't want just the usual suspects there. We really want to get, like, a variety of, you know, people, teenagers, you know, senior citizens, I mean, public housing, private housing, land, landowners, business owners, you know, we want, we want it all. Um, and then for the organizations and the people that, you know, commit to really working with us throughout this process, um, you know, we will be having sort of monthly meetings that may be a form of just a phone call, maybe an email thing. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to take up a lot of time. Um, we also want to find out from you who else you feel like needs to be in part of this conversation. We may have missed someone, people that aren't here. I mean, there are we invited a lot of people that just couldn't show up. So we do have, you know, there are a lot of other members, but um, we want to know who else, you know, we should be reaching out to. Um, and you know, I think you already touched on this and like how. Resilient Red Hook would like to work with all the organizations in terms of like helping your projects that fit into the larger vision plan, um, so that we can you know do this as a sort of community cohesive community process. So anyway, thank you and everybody who took the time to show up. I know it's a uh, you know, busy. And those are Carolina's. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.